High Corn Series. So children, we have completed the lesson part and the fun with the grammar and the vocabulary part of this lesson. And now uh, it is time for the skills, right? So we know that with every lesson we will learn reading, writing, listening and speaking part because English is a language and the language has to be learned so has to be used, right? So we'll start with this a reading passage and here will be a passage first for you. Uh, you will hear it once. I will uh, read it again and after that I will give you time uh, for you to read and understand it, right? Read the following passage. It is about a girl born in a poor family who rose to become the Prime Minister of a country later. Golda Meir was a well-known leader. She was a teacher and politician who became the fourth Prime Minister of Israel in 1969. She was Israel's first woman to hold such an office. Golda Meir was described as the Iron Lady. She was born in Russia in a carpenter's family. She had two sisters and five other siblings who died in childhood. The family later shifted to the United States. Golda Meir helped her mother run a grocery store. She attended school and played an important part in collecting money for textbooks for her classmates. She also found the American Young Sister Society at the age of 14. She studied in high school and also worked part-time. Golda Meir's mother wanted her to leave school and get married. She was completely against this and went to stay with her married sister in Colorado. She married a sign painter named Morris Merson after graduating. She also taught in some public schools and Milwaukee in the USA. Later, Golda Meir moved to Palestine and got involved in various political activities. She was elected Prime Minister of Israel in 1969 and resigned in 1974. Okay, so you have uh, heard the passage. I will read it once again. It's about a girl born in a poor family who rose to become the Prime Minister of a country later. Golda Meir was a well-known leader. She was a teacher and a politician who became the fourth Prime Minister of Israel in 1969. She was Israel's first woman to hold such an office. Golda Meir was described as the Iron Lady. She was born in Russia in a carpenter's family. She had two sisters and five other siblings who died in childhood. The family later shifted to the United States. Golda Meir helped her mother run a grocery store. She attended a school and played an important part in collecting money from textbooks for her classmates. She also found the American Young Sister Society at the age of 14. She studied in high school and also worked part-time. Golda Meir's mother wanted her to leave school and get married. She was completely against this and went to stay with her married sister in Colorado, another region in USC. She married a sign painter named Morris Meyerson after graduating. She also taught in some public schools in uh, Milwaukee in the USA. Later, Golda Meir moved to Palestine and got involved in various political activities. She was the elected Prime Minister of Israel in 1969 and resigned in 1974. So this is about a girl by the name Golda Meir. Uh, who was born in Russia and uh, brought up in USA and became the Prime Minister of uh, Israel, right? So she was the fourth Prime Minister of Israel and she was the first woman Prime Minister of Israel. 
So she was born in a poor family and uh, she had two sisters who were alive and five other siblings who died in their childhood itself, right? So right from her young stage, her childhood, she helped her mother to run a grocery shop. At the same time, she attended school also, okay? <laughs> she attended school and played an important part in collecting money for textbook for her classmates, okay? Yeah, collecting money from the public so that the poor students in her class can buy textbooks. And at the age of 14, she found an organization called American Young Sisters Society. American Young Sisters Society was an organization that she founded at the age of 14. She studied in high school and also worked part-time. She studied in the high school and also worked part-time. Golda Meir's mother wanted her to leave school and get married at the age, very small age, okay? But she was against it and what did she, what did she do? Ah, she went to her sister who was already married and stayed there, continued her studies, completed his gra her graduation. Graduation means a degree, right? So after completing her graduation, she married a person called a, a sign painter. Sign painter means... Uh, a painter who named Morris Mayerson, right? Then she worked as a teacher in some uh, schools in uh, Milwaukee in the USA, right? Then after that, they moved to Palestine. Palestine is in Israel, yeah, was in Israel. Then she got actively into politics and then she became the prime minister in the year 1969 and uh, in 1974, she resigned the post also. Okay. In 1974, she resigned the post of the Prime Minister. Right. Okay. So now I will keep the screen the same for another minute so that you can read the passage. Fine, now we'll do the question answer part of this passage. So the first question is, where was Golda Meir born? Where was Golda Meir born? Golda Meir was born in Russia. Mm -hmm. So where was she born? She was born in Russia. What was Golda Meir popularly known as? What is she known as? Yeah, she was very strong, isn't it? Yes, Golda Meir was popularly known as Iron Lady. What was she known as? She was known as Iron Lady. So, Golda Meir was popularly known as Iron Lady. Okay. Which society was founded by Golda Meir? So, when she was in school, when she was 14 years old, she founded an organization. What was that? Uh? Yes, American Young Sisters Society was founded by Golda Meir. So, what was the society? American Young Sisters Society. So, Golda Meir founded this organization when she was very young, <clears throat> at the age of 14. 
Yes. Whom did Golda Meir marry and what was his profession? Whom did Golda Meir marry? Golda Meir married Morris Meyerson and he was a sign painter. So whom did she marry? She married Morris Meyerson and she was a sign painter. What's the next question? Why did Golda Meir go to Colorado to live with her sister? So she strongly opposed something and went to live with her uh, married sister at Colorado. No? Yeah, Golda Meir's mother wanted her, wanted her to leave school and get married. Golda Meir's mother wanted her to leave school and get married. So Golda Meir was completely against this and went to Colorado to live with her sister. Her mother wanted her to stop studies and uh, get married. But she was totally against it and she wanted to get married only after completing her uh, studies. So she left her mother, went to her married sister, stayed there, completed her studies and then got married, isn't it? Yes. When was Golda Meir elected the Prime Minister of Israel? When was that happened? Golda Meir was elected the Prime Minister of Israel in 1969. So Golda Meir was elected the Prime Minister of Israel in 1969. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, she was elected in 1969 and she resigned in the year 1974. Right? Let's practice. Follow your teacher while he or she is saying and pronounce the words. Yeah. So here are two word, two sounds given here. Okay. So the first sound is a ra. Ra. The second sound is a za. Right? The first sound is a ra. The second sound is a ra. So the first sound is ra and the second sound is a za. It's not sa, it's a za. Z, za. Okay? So the first sound which is given in the words over there is not that familiar as far as. Uh, we people, the Telugu speaking people are concerned. We usually pronounce it as Sha, but that is not a Sha, it's a Ra. What is it? Ra, Ra, right? Okay. So I will read the words one by one and after that we will practice it together, right? Okay. V I S I O N, vision. V I S I O N, vision. R E V I S I O N, revision. R E V I S I O N revision P L E A S U R E pleasure 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 okay P L E A S U R E pleasure E R O S I O N erosion E R O S I O N erosion C O N F U S I O N confusion. C O N F U S I O N confusion. It's not confusion, it's confusion. T E L E V I S I O N television. T E L E V I S I O N television. Right? So, vision, revision, pleasure. Erosion, confusion, television. Right? Now, S A Y S says, says. See, the first S is pronounced as a sa, the second S is pronounced as a za. So the word is says. P A Y S pays. L O U S E loves. R O U S E rouse. R I S E rise M S Miss Right? So says 
says, pays, loves, rouse, rise, miss. Right? So now we will practice it. Okay? I will read it one by one and you need to read it after me. V I S I O N, vision. It's not vision, it's vision. R E V I S I O N, revision. P L E A S U R E, pleasure, pleasure. E R O S I O N, erosion. C O N F U S I O N confusion T E L E V I S I O N television S A Y S the second part S A Y S says P A Y S pays L O U S E loves R O U S E rouse R I S E rise M S miss Okay, so now we will compare this. Vision says, revision pays, pleasure loves, erosion rouse, confusion rise, television miss. Right? So now I will keep the screen the same for another minute. You can uh, read and practice the words and the sounds in that. Okay, let's converse, right? So now we will have a conversation here and uh, we will listen to that conversation first, right? We will listen to that conversation and once we've completed that, I will give you the wordings of this conversation so that you can practice that with your friends, right? Okay, now listen to the conversation. Bhargav. Avinash. Hey Paul, did you read the book that I gave you about Abraham Lincoln? Yes, I did. What a leader he was. Simply great. I recently read about Golda Meir, the first woman Prime Minister of Israel. She was also very dynamic. Really? I have heard about her from my grandparents. Avinash, you will be surprised that though both Abraham Lincoln and Golda Meir came from a very humble background, their families were simple, but they rose to be the heads of their country. Isn't that amazing? 
Yes, it is. This shows that nothing is impossible for a person who is determined and keeps on trying hard to achieve his goal. I agree with you. I will return your book tomorrow. Thanks for such a good book. You're welcome. Fine. Now go on to the next one. That's a rhyme time. Okay, you will listen to the rhyme now. Once that gets completed, I will give you the wordings of the rhymes so that you can practice that with your friends at the class. Okay, once when the school gets opened, you have to go to school again. So then we can practice that with our friends over there, right? Okay, now listen to the rhyme first. John was born with big sparkling eyes. He had big dreams in them that would help him rise. He knew he would do something great one day. So, he learned and enjoyed all that in life's pathway. He visited near and far away hills and vales, met people, observed and heard their tales. He discovered that people and nature, each is always the best teacher. One day he woke up with an idea bright, wanted to write a book on adventures of life, right? So he wrote about all that he had learned and seen. The book has a hit on the literary scene. People liked all that he had to share. He was happy that he could dare. For life can be like a fairy tale or nightmare. Depends on how you care and... Okay. So now you have listened to the poem, the rhyme. And now I will give you the wordings so that you two can also practice it at home, right? Fine. Now the next one. Match the group of words in the two columns and read them loud. I said complete the sentence. So these are the sentences from the poem. And uh, we need to read the sentences and identify the second part of the sentence. And we need to match that with the second column. Right? Okay, so the first sentence is John knew he would uh, and meet people and uh, nature were the best teachers on adventurous life. Do something great one day, isn't it? Yeah, he could do something great one day. So what did John do? John visited places and met different people. 
so what did he discover he discovered that people yeah and nature were the best teachers and nature were the best teachers he wanted to write a book on adventurous life isn't it yes so john knew he would do something great one day john visited places and met people he discovered that the people and the nature were the best teachers he wanted to write a book on adventures adventures of life right yeah so now uh, i'll keep the screen for another minute so that you can uh, read it Okay, now the next one. Pair of rhyming words have been picked from the poem. Add two more words of your own. So two words are already given there, and uh, we need to add two more, right? So ice, rice. We can say. Eyes and uh, F R I E S fries. Eyes rice, eyes fries. Day lay, bay delay. Bright light, fight. S I G H T sight. Okay, seen, seen, keen, teen. Okay, so eyes and rice rhymes. Rice and eyes rhymes. Eyes and fries rhymes. Right? Day, lay, bay, delay. Bright light, fight, sight. Seen, seen, keen, teen. Okay. So we have completed the task. Now you can have a look at the words. Okay, so now we'll go to the next one. Write the synonyms of the antonyms of the following words. So here are four words from the rhyme given: rise, bright, light, and careful. We need to write the antonyms. Antonyms means the uh, opposites. So what is the op uh, opposite of rise? Rise means going up, isn't it? Fall, coming down, right? Bright light, dim light, isn't it? Liked, disliked, careful, careless, right? Yeah. So the opposite of rise is fall. The opposite of bright is dim. The opposite of light is disliked. The opposite of careful is careless, right? So these are. The antonyms of the words are given there. So have a look at it.
writing skills transcription rewrite the following passage neatly in your notebook and underline all the pronouns in it also mention the person for each personal pronoun used <laughs> so here is a passage we need to identify the pronouns in that and uh, we need to we need to identify which personal pronoun they are so he was tall and thin but he was strong he could often cut with an axe and was good at it at illinois he worked as a shopkeeper postmaster and even as a general store owner as years passed he soon became popular in the area so this is a passage taken from the text of the lincoln right so yeah he was tall and thin he is a pronoun isn't it he is a third personal pronoun was tall and thin but he he again but he was a strong again he third personal pronoun he is a third personal pronoun he could he would often cut wood with an axe and was good at it it is also a pronoun na yeah it is also a third personal pronoun at illinois he would again he third personal pronoun as a shopkeeper a postmaster and even as a general store owner as years passed he soon became popular again a uh, he is there right he so he was tall and thin but he was strong he would often cut wood with an axe and was good at it at illinois he worked as a shopkeeper postmaster and even a general store owner as years passed he soon became popular in that area so only two pronouns are used in this passage one is he third personal pronoun and the second is it which is also a third personal pronoun right okay composition complete the following sentences by adding your own words so the three sentences a part of that is given and the remaining part we need to complete right okay so we will redo them one by one she smiled at the cute little girl let me think of a poet they made a living on the outskirts of the village of the village okay so i have completed the sentences with my own words you can add your own sentences over there and complete them okay she smiled at the cute little girl she uh, let me think of a poet they made a living on the outskirts of the village okay what's the homework in this lesson complete the following conversation by adding suitable words of your own in the blanks <clears throat> so our teacher told us about mahatma gandhi today it was an interesting story about the great freedom fighter so the boy is saying our teacher told us about mahatma gandhi today it was an interesting story about the great freedom fighter so when the boy said that what did the girl say okay do you know he was called the mahatma do you know he was called the mahatma second yes he was born on 2nd october the girl says we celebrate his birth anniversary as gandhi jayanti the boy says in today's world we need to practice non violence in today's world we need to practice non violence and the girl says i think he is an evergreen leader he followed non violence who mahatma gandhi we should follow the his teachings and paths and the boy says you know what 
he was one of the most loved personalities in the world yes he is very inspir inspirational personality well even today we need great leaders like him i have got this book my experiments with truth i bought it from the bookstore the girl i would also like to read it give it to me please and the boy says sure i will give it once i finish reading it so there is a conversation happening in between two students a boy and a girl and they are talking about mahatma gandhi something that they have learned in the class and something they are going to do right yeah so you will have this conversation in the same as an exercise part when you download the pdf okay so once when you download it you can uh, get that from that and uh, do it yourself project work work in groups of 5 and make a project on any world leader of your choice paste pictures and write details about the early life education and achievements of the leader display it on the board of the class two students from each group may speak a few sentences about what we should learn from him or her and follow in today's world right so you need to do a group activity this is actually a group activity a group of five students should sit together and collect the data details of uh, the world leaders and they need to write it okay yeah so i have done one small project here about george washington george washington was an american he was born in 1732 he was the first president of the united states he was one of the founding father of the united states he served as a commander in chief of the continental army during the american revolutionary war he is popularly known as the father of the country he was widely admired for his strong leadership qualities he died in 1799 so this is something that i have done about the george washington in the same way we have picked a uh, pasted a picture of george washington also here so in the same way you can make write ups of a world leaders right okay now more to the next one value corner what we have learned from this lesson for our life Abraham Lincoln had many failures in life. He lost five separate elections before being elected as a president of the United States. He kept on trying again and again until he reached his goal. It's not five actually; it's eight. Okay, be sure you put your feet on the right place and stand firm. So that is what Abraham Lincoln said about success. What is that? be sure you put your feet in the right place then stand firm so once we have to make it sure that what we are doing is the right thing to be done okay once we make it sure that what we are doing is the right thing to be done then we have to be determined then we have to be there should not be any compromise we have to be strong determined and yes try work work hard only then we will have a success right so that is a lesson that we have to learn from the life of abraham lincoln and with this this lesson lincoln the great comes to an end uh, in the next class we will uh, meet with a new lesson okay so till then take care